Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha. Welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Our guest today is one of those guests we don't need to actually introduce, uh, but I'll give you a little bit of background. We have John Michael Talbot with us. I have a personal uh, love for John Michael because I uh, I was, uh, we're kind of, I think, similar uh, to the same age. Uh, and when he, I remember him first as a member of Mason Prophet, a, uh, a band that was became very popular. I think he was very young. Maybe he was younger than 20 years old. When that band came out and then i believe he and his brother had a band i think it was called the talbot brothers band and then he then he then he came into this uh, uh conversion experience with jesus and was i think involved with a lot of the musicians of the back in the day of the jesus people movement and then oh my gosh something happened to john michael talbot he became a catholic and he did something no one thought could could work he did a set of a rock cross country rock or whatever you would call his genre as music he did the most eloquent, beautiful expression of the mass in his music, which is my, became my mother's favorite album, The Last Supper. And she would play it with us whenever we'd go visit their home. Uh, when the family was together, she would have John Michael Talbot's album on. So we, you, I, I go way back with John Michael Talbot, but he doesn't go way back with me. But welcome to the show, John Michael. Well, thank you, Bear. It's great to be with you. So glad, so glad to have you. That you have a new new book out, which is kind of like what we want to talk about. Is this basically goes over the story of your life? What's the name of the book? The, uh, the book and the recording are called "Late Have I Loved You." And I think you, st I, yeah, I think you stole that from someone, didn't you? Or did he plagiarize you? Saint he Augustine. Plagi he plagiarized you, I bet. No, I'm not that old. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, no, I got it from him. I got it from his confessions. And and basically, uh, I stole it because I, I had an experience about seven and a half years ago. I was very, very sick and in the hospital. And during that experience, I wanted to praise God. I couldn't form words, so I just mumbled in tongues, praising, mm -hmm. wanted to speak it out loud. So I just, you know, uh, 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 kind of like that. Um, and as I was praising God, went on for hours, and I think it was my guardian angel and the angel of death. One grabbed me under each shoulder and took me out of my hospital bed and took me to a place outside of time where I got a glimpse of paradise. So not close up. A lot of people, you know, have this experience, but they go close up. I could see paradise as a as an orb, a bright white orb, but it was comforting to look at. Jesus was right in the middle of it. And I could see in a flash bear all of my sins, mm -hmm. not not like a list, but as an intuition. So I knew all my sins, and as an intuition, I knew all of God's mercy and forgiveness in Christ all at once. And it was overwhelming, just utterly overwhelming. And all I could do was weep. And and when I had done this, again, it was beyond time, sufficiently, these angels turned me around and took me back to my hospital bed where I was mumbling in tongues. And I was there and I got better and I went back. We had a little mission house in Houston. And I went back to the mission house called St. Clair's. It's gone now. We closed it. Um, and and uh, whenever I would pray, all I could do was weep. Whenever I would hear the name of Jesus, all I could do was weep. And Mass, you know, the, the divine liturgy was overwhelming, especially at the consecration the realism of Jesus being fully present. I always believed it. I always experienced it. But now it was on steroids that he had died for me. Every drop of blood he shed for me. And this experience was brought so close that at every Mass, I was just turned to jello, and all I could do was weep. 
and that he rose for me and gave me victory over my sins and over my weaknesses. And he rose to prepare a place for me in heaven. That's where we're going. This sojourn on earth is so short. Mm -hmm. It's just a flash in eternity, and we are made for eternity. And he sent the Holy Spirit to empower us on this journey. All of that became just bang, an explosion in every Mass. So, And I would just weep. And for about two years, all I could do in prayer was weep. And I realized that Despite all the things I've accomplished, you know, I've got all these awards, I've sold millions of records, hundreds of thousands of books, I've founded a community, I've done all these things, and like St. Thomas Aquinas in the West, I felt like, well, all of this is just straw compared to, to the real prize, and that is where we're going, and that's heaven, the hope of heaven. So I felt, you know, I needed to update my biography, <clears throat> but but my bio, my editor says, John Michael, don't don't have somebody else write it. Do an autobiography. Write it with your stories. Tell this experience and tell your stories, and go back and tell some stories that nobody's ever heard before. You know, tell some stories about the early days and you know, and Mason Prophet. So I threw in some stories about Mason Prophet. Not all of them. I mean, there's a gazillion of them. Um, the early days in Christian contemporary music. Tell some stories nobody's ever heard before. Uh, and take out some stories. I, I wanted to take out any negative references at all. I've, mm -hmm. you know, because I've seen the underbelly of the church and the underbelly mm -hmm. of Christian contemporary music. And mm -hmm. I wrote about that before and I thought, no, nah, I don't need to say that. I'm getting ready to go to be with the Lord. I, I don't want that on my conscience. I'll let yes. them that out. I just took all that stuff out. Mm -hmm. And so I made it a very short autobiography, readable. And um, the average person can read it very quickly. And I, I did a recording, a musical recording, that tried to capture maybe a tenth of an inch mm -hmm. musically. Mm -hmm. I call it an audio icon mm -hmm. of that experience that I had of glimpsing paradise. Uh, three songs from Augustine, A Late of I Loved You, and then St. Paul, we see as through a glass dimly. Mm. Uh, and then uh, St. Romuald, the 11th century reformer of, of the Benedictine monasticism, I sit in your cell as in paradise. Mm. And then the three last ones are the apocalypse triptych. Where, because everybody thinks of the apocalypse as this scary book, but in fact, that that the apocalypse is where we hear the greatest scenes of heavenly worship. It's the only book in the Bible where the word Alleluia is used. Mm. We think it's all through, but it's not. It's only in the apocalypse that Alleluia is used. Beautiful. So I took those scenes of heavenly worship and put them to music. It's and so beautiful. Yeah, but only, on, only, yeah, a, yeah. only a tenth yeah. of an inch yeah. at most compared to what I experienced when those angels let me see this. Yeah, and that beautiful. hope of heaven is what what I live for now. Mm -hmm. So you that's know, what I Loved You is all about. How beautiful. I know, I think Scott Hahn said in his conversion when he first went to Mass, he just wanted to stand up and say, this is the book of Revelations right here. Don't you see it? Don't you see it all? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we're, we're, we're talking with John Michael Talbot, someone who meant a lot to me in my youth. I remember John Michael when I had my conversion experience in 73, I think it was. And I was going yeah. to Baylor and Word Records and Sparrow. Were, Sparrow was there too, right? Weren't they in Waco? I think they were. Uh, Sparrow, no, was formed. Billy Ray was in Waco when he was with Word Records, and mm -hmm. he was the A&R director for Murr Records, which was uh, the great music wing right. of Word and Records. And then he, formed, then he formed Sparrow. Sparrow, and he moved to California. He wanted to move to California because that's where 
really the Jesus movement was happening. Yeah, the hotbed Maranatha music. We, we got to take a break. I'm sorry, but we're going to be back. We're yep. going to we're going to really have fun with uh, talk, talking with John Michael Talbot because our next guest I'm going to be interviewing actually is Brady Stiller, and he uh, wrote a book on our life as an adventure, our life as a journey, based on the writings of G.K. Chesterton, and that's that's why this show is called the Bear Wozniak Adventure because I I'm on an adventure. Every one of our guests is on an adventure, and we'll get to talk story a little bit more with John Michael Talbot uh, after we take this break. We'll be right back. Here is a YouTube video short, which is based on an excerpt from my newest book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? Set a physical challenge for yourself. When is the last time you did that? Is your resting heart rate higher than room temperature or down in the 50s where it belongs? Or do you even know your resting heart rate? How about your endurance? How far can you walk? How far can you run? How far can you swim? Ask it this way. If you were in a fight to protect your family, how long could you last? So set a physical challenge for your life. Pursuing that makes your life bigger and better. And God loves the human body. Let God find pleasure in how you take care of this beautiful gift that he's given you. Schoolofmanliness.com is a place for men of grit and grace to join together, to inspire, to encourage, and to challenge each other to grow in manly virtue. Members receive morning man meditations, a monthly curriculum that is rich with audio, video, and written content, and a trail guide to help you map out your new trajectory. Many of our members lead their sons through this same curriculum. Your membership gives you access to both the man cave which is our non-Facebook type community, and the School of Manliness at schoolofmanliness.com. Become a member at schoolofmanliness.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. My newest book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? has hit the top five in Christian books for a good reason. It's because men are searching for traction and a trail guide to live out the unique calling and the gifts that they were born with, that each man individually is factory loaded with by God. Paul said, be watchful, stand firm in the faith, act like men, do all things in love. Finally, here is a book that talks with men the way men talk with each other. Just plain old straight shoot. By the way, Mama Bears, this is your chance to get this message to your men. Go to schoolofmanliness.com or anywhere books are sold. 12 Rules for Manliness. Where have all the cowboys gone? This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha. Welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to invite you to go to our website, schoolofmanliness.com. We, you know, our focus uh, in our ministry is, we always say it's that guy in the black pickup truck. And uh, I, I remember once when I, when the ministry first launched, I had, I wouldn't, I don't know if it called a vision, but I had this very clear image in my mind that that's the man that we needed to reach out to because so many men have that black pickup truck. But in this image that I had, the black pickup truck was spinning its wheels in this gravel because it, it had no weight in the bed of the truck. And mm. so our job is to give you that that weightiness of purpose. And also, you know, he had no big toolbox, you know, so to give you the tools to live your life. So if you come to schoolofmanliness.com, 
we have Bears Man Cave there. It's a community of men. It's not. It's it's a non Facebook experience where the men share we share our lives together we have zoom meetups once a month and we have a an ongoing uh curriculum on the school of manliness so men come to school of manliness.com and but we know it's the women that that drag the men over there so take those knuckle draggers over there and help them to become part of our what we're doing at school of manliness.com speaking about a real man a man who's lived a life of great adventure a man who's actually living a, a life of boldness he's taken many many bold steps uh, I'm sure many, many times um, the challenges were great, sometimes looking like they were impossible. But uh, we have with us today our guest, John Michael Talbot. John Michael, welcome back. Thanks, you, Bear. It's great to be here. And and I like to hear about that school of manliness. That's good, because Jesus doesn't turn us into wimps. He turns <laughs> men into real men and women into real women of God. So... Yeah. Uh, Praise Talk God. about that. Let, let it roll. Talk about that. Well, you know? I mean, you know, there's one of the big confusions of our era, and this is Satan's agenda, mm-hmm. is to turn women into men and men into women. He's mm-hmm. turning everything opposite. You know, and if you if you I've had friends in my rock and roll days who were Satanists. They were actually members of covens. And at one point there was a there was a hex put on the Talbot family. And they came to us and they said, the only way to break this is for you to become a Christian. And they said, the thing you need to remember is that our agenda is to turn everything backwards. And we celebrate a black mass. They don't have a, they don't have a black. Yeah. Why do they focus on the mass? It must mean, because the mass means something. Because that's the real deal. Mm-hmm. And they know it's the real deal. They don't have a black worship service. They don't have a black Bible study. They don't have a, you know, a black big box church. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they mm-hmm. have a black mass. And Jesus, they have Jesus on the cross contorted backwards. Mm. So their agenda is to take right and make it wrong and take wrong and make it right their agenda is is to turn everything backwards and that's exactly what's happening in our culture so i saw it starting to happen back with mason prophet and then i saw it at the beginning of the jesus movement i said what's happening is women are becoming masculine and men are becoming feminine mm-hmm Mm-hmm. Started very subtly. Now it's not subtle anymore. Right. So now there's a confusion of genders mm-hmm. and a multiplication of genders. Satan first went after the family. Now he's going after the human being itself. So he's destroying and confusing the very human person mm-hmm. uh, with a very rare experience of those who are born where they can be either gender and the uh, gender right. and the doctor comes out and says, okay, what do you want? That's, that's a that's an anomaly. 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 Right. Okay. Everybody else is born either with a, a X or a Y chromosome. You're either male or female. And that male or female chromosome is in every cell of your body. It's in every organ of your body. You can't just change one or two organs. It's all through your body. So I don't like to use the word gender. I like to use the word sex. What and I use the I, I use the word manliness, not masculine. Okay. Because masculine's been co-opted and the word man the word man in its root, uh the word ver in Latin means ver is a root word for virtue also. Yeah. So yeah, so I, I use manliness and it's I, and it's been interesting, John Michael. I've I've gone into some University, some that were one that was Catholic, and the 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 female professors did their best to shut me down and not let me even come and speak, just based on the title of the book, Twelve Rules for Manliness, where have all the cowboys gone? But I'm getting off on on on. My, on well, I'll tell you. But, let's end with this. Yeah, they had yeah. a great speaker at the Eucharistic Congress in Indianapolis who spoke for an hour on this, mm. and his ministry is for those who have, are considering transitioning and for those who have detransitioned. Mm. And he's a great listener. He doesn't condemn anybody. 
but he he knows his facts the medical facts and he says the medical facts are not being shared with those who are considering transitioning right and it's and it's it's more it's a it's it's a medical abuse as opposed to helping someone heal some some real right hurt. You know the okay. thing is too, but let, let, I, I want to go. I want to go this with is, you too. By the way, this is not my ministry. This is but not. I, but, but I want to go to back to your time with Mason Prophet, and you said this is yeah. where it began to happen. It was that time when the pill came out. It was at that time when men would say to women, uh, "If you really love me, you'd have sex with sex with me because you don't have to worry." About it. You know, and John Paul II wrote "Love and Responsibility." It was when men started to just take advantage of women and not be responsible for women. You know, having sex with no responsibility. That right. men became emasculated and women, you know, they, it's right there, right at that critical moment in time when you were when you were going through your conversion. It was our generation that popularized that popularized the the immorality that was in the universities, really in the uh, nineteen teen the. The 1915 to 1920 era. It was already in the universities at that point, but it mm. hadn't been brought to the public and popularized until the 1960s. So it was our, my generation, your generation, I'm on the tail end of the generation that popularized it and made it cool, really cool. So I have to own that mm -hmm. as, as part of the rock and roll generation we're the one who kicked it through the goalposts i mean the beatles mm. i still love the beatles i think there's nobody that makes music like the beatles there's something about it mm -hmm. but they came along at the right time with the right sound with the right look you know it was just boom but it mm. it is the music that kicked that entire movement through the goalposts that's true and, and it was and it was the it, it was the pill that that opened the door though I think and so yeah. and and, and, and so, it was a country music song that really made that popular in the country field. really I don't what was it uh, yeah huh go ahead go ahead just roll we got no. another couple of minutes till our break and then we'll we'll get back so go ahead. so so yeah I mean Terry and I were very much involved with that and basically I looked at that whole world. We were doing 300 concerts a, a year with Mason Prophet. We were we were supposed to be the next super group, the most popular manager in the in the 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 business. Jerry Weintraub mm -hmm. basically wanted to make us the next super group. He put the proposal out. Terry actually turned it down. I didn't know this until literally about 10 years ago. He turned it down. He felt it was the devil's bargain and he turned it down and joe smith at warner brothers and jerry weintraub they respected it but they quit promoting mason profit so the upward trajectory of this band nobody nobody could follow us we were the live phenomenon in the business uh but the upward trajectory stopped and we were wearing out and that's when I started looking into spirituality. I said, God, who are you? A he, a she, or an it? I don't mm -hmm. have a dog in the hunt. I just want to know. I had an experience with Jesus Christ in a well, hotel that, that, room. We got to take a break. I, uh, we got to take a break because I want you to really get to go into that. Okay. Uh, John Michael Talbot, uh, what the name of your new book again is called Late Have I Loved Thee? Am I, do I have Late a Have I Loved You. Late, Late Have I Loved You. He doesn't, he doesn't like to use uh these and thou's he's not he's not he's more up to date than that but uh we're going to have you um talk more about this conversion experience but at this time you were how old you were you were like 20 years old or right around that time i was about uh 17. yeah my gosh I, and mason prophet love the music the talbot brothers band so we're talking with john michael talbot his his very name is a poem uh we'll be right back with more of the bear wozniak adventure Here is a YouTube video short, which is based on an excerpt from my newest book, 12 Rules for Manliness, 
where have all the cowboys gone? Ride the proving trail. When I was 20 years old, I discovered a 2,600 year old quote that stirred something powerful up in me. I felt like a racehorse that is seething with power, hardly able to control his anticipation to run the course as he waits for the rider to spur him into action and release him to his desire. These are the words of the ancient Hebrew prophet Habakkuk. Write the vision down in words big enough so that the one reading it can run while he's reading. And if the vision tarries, wait for it, for surely it will come. Seek the Lord in his plan for your life and then ask for the grit and the grace to pursue it. We invite our mama bears to join with us at deepadventure.com. You'll have access to all of the Long Ride Home TV shows even before they air on EWTN. Plus, three years of the shareable Ocean Sunrise daily catechism videos. Plus, at deepadventure.com, a 20% discount at our online store with all of our great t-shirts and clothes and books and rosaries and medals and all kinds of accessories. You'll also get an autographed copy of Bear's latest book, and for a limited time, a Catholic biker stuffed teddy bear. All at deepadventure.com. Come on, Mama Bears, let's hear you roar. Go to schoolofmanliness.com and subscribe to our weekly email to receive video YouTube links of the Bear Wozniak radio show, as well as the Spirit of Adventure with Bear and Cindy TV show, which, by the way, is filmed in the tropics, as well as our manly evangelistic YouTube shorts. Go to schoolofmanliness.com. Be the kind of man that when he gets out of bed in the morning, the devil says, oh no, he's up. Go to deepadventure.com and invite Bear to speak. Aloha, Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. My name is Bear Wozniak, coming to you from Waikiki Beach. I want to invite everyone to uh, check out my newest book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone, published by Sophia Institute. It's been out for about 10 months now, and it's been constantly bumping into the top 10 for books uh, for Christian men. And I think it's probably because the women are buying this for the men. Men don't usually buy books, so it kind of falls on you women to get this in their hands. But just tell them, if, just read the first chapter, and if you don't like it, don't read any more of it. Because we've had men, I've had several men come to me and say, I've read the book all the way through over the weekend, and then I started it again on Monday. There's so many young men especially who haven't been properly fathered. And this this book just talks to men like men would talk to each other, sitting in the back porch having a a brandy and a and, and a cigar. You know, we, it, it's it's very real. It's spiritual, but it just gets. Uh, it, well, I would call it grit and grace. So, check it out. You can get it anywhere Catholic books or anywhere books are sold. Uh, Twelve rules for manliness. Where have all the cowboys gone? Or you can go to our website, schoolofmanliness.com. Uh, normally, I don't talk this fast, but it's because I've got John Michael Talbot with us. So, I really want to hear about this this time of conversion. You were not even eighteen years old. Your 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 band Mason Prophet was skyrocketing. You had great bands opening for you. You know, you were, you oh, were, yeah. The, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, everybody. I mean, Doobies, the Doobie Brothers, yes. yeah. John Denver. Oh, we played with everybody. We didn't play with the Beatles, the Stones, the Who. We didn't play with Hendrix. We didn't play with Bob Dylan. Uh, just about everybody else you can think of. We played with them. We rubbed shoulders with them. We heard the best of the best of the music at the time. Not from the not from the audience, from the stage. Wow! You know, I mean, yeah. Eric Clapton came up to Terry in the wings while Joe Walsh was playing with the James Gang, you know, and came up to Terry and said, "Man, I really like your band." And he looked loved at, it, loved the band, dude. Motion to Joe it. Walsh, referencing himself, and said, "See, there's always somebody better." He was oh. very, very humble. So we, I mean, we just knew everybody. Uh, but there was something missing. So I was praying, you know, what there's got to be something more. And I was into Native Americans. I was into all the different religions of the world. Mm -hmm. And I was praying, God, I don't have a relationship with you. Uh, I, I'm reading all these books, but I don't have the encounter that all these founders and mystics had. And I wanted that. And I, I ended up having a, 
or a, a vision of Jesus. I'm not a visionary, but I had a vision of Jesus in a hotel room out in the Midwest somewhere. He didn't give me a commission. He didn't tell me to go save the world. He just was there. And I knew I was loved and I knew my sins were forgiven and I wasn't a terrible sinner. I was very young. Uh, but I knew I was starting to do some things that my mom and dad wouldn't be proud of. Well said. Well said. And, yeah. So, uh, so uh, I became a Christian. And I didn't know what it meant. I didn't know any theology. And I became part of the Jesus movement. My brother followed soon thereafter. I didn't try to make him follow. He just did. Mm. And, and uh, he did it for his own reasons. And we uh, stayed in the band for a while. With the band burned out, we were all going our separate directions. How could you stay together with that with that <laughs> that, that that schedule, Un unrelenting? Oh, we were just worn out. 300, mm. 300 concerts a year. You know, a record every 18 months. Uh, we were worn out. And so we broke up. And and uh, uh, I remember one of the last dates we played, the guys in the dirt band, the nitty gritty dirt band, they said, yeah, well, we wish you wouldn't break up. You're so good. But they said, we're so happy you're going to break up because we're going to get all those dates. <laughs> right, 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 right. So, so anyway, we broke up. We formed the Talbot Brothers and... Uh, Joe Smith at Warner's got really, really angry because we wouldn't tour the record as Mason Prophet. So we didn't push it. So that didn't go anywhere. It was probably the best country rock record on Warner's that year. Mm -hmm. uh, so that went away. And uh, Terry and I got involved in early Christian music. We met Billy Ray Hearn, who was uh, with Murr Records, uh, the, the, the contemporary wing of Word Records. And uh, we had put in a, a demo to Arista with Clive Davis. Clive didn't want it because it was we had put Mason Prophet back together. And he Terry wanted to do rock. And Clive Davis didn't want a rock record. He wanted more of a country rock record. Mm -hmm. So he turned it down. So we were going to break up that form of the band. And it was a good band. It was me and Terry and Al Perkins. He had been with Manassas mm -hmm. and um, uh, Souther Hillman and Foray. Um, it was a good band. But but uh, so Billy Ray wanted to sign the band and heard us at this festival out in Colorado Springs. And and I and he came up to me and I said, well, this is the last date we're doing. I said, would you want to do me? He said, sure, I'll sign you on the spot. And um, as it turned out, uh, he was going to form this new record company called Sparrow and move to California. And I ended up going with him. That's where you needed to I, go. Yeah. yeah so I, Southern I ended, California. Yeah. So I it signed with Billy Ray. I did two records that did fairly well. Terry ended up signing with Sparrow. And then I became a Catholic because I saw all this division out there among Christianity they all were good people. They had the Holy Spirit, and they go to the Bible to try to figure out how to live as Christians. But they were all divided. And I said, "Isn't well, it son, interesting? Because everybody's their own uh, their own pope, kind of. I'm going to yeah. decide what this scripture means." And can, can I just say something as you're on this roll? Um, yeah. I'll, I'll wait. I'll wait. Go ahead. Keep rolling. I, I, so so like anyway, the, so so what's missing, Bear? So I said, "Well, they're missing something. If we can't even." agree on how to celebrate the Lord's Supper, something mm. is missing. So I said, well, let's go back to the early church from which the scriptures came and see if we can't find a missing link here. So I did that. And as I read, you know, the Didache, Ignatius of Antioch, Clement of Rome, uh, Irenaeus of Lyon, you know, all it, of those. It was Justin Martyr that pulled the trigger for me. Yeah, Where, yeah. where he describes exactly the Epiclesis. Oh, I go, wait a minute. Yeah, when I when I came back to, uh, I was well. You see all my books on the. I see Club him right behind, behind you. There. Yeah, so I mean, it was that moment of Justin Martyr when I go. The ancient, the primitive church was a Catholic church. Yeah. I, I, well, I learned that I've seen, I've heard almost these exact words in the, the mass today, and he wrote this, you know, around the the second century or maybe even the first century. So yeah, yeah when, you, when you get confronted by the early church fathers, it's like. 
I, I, I came yeah. raw. I, I had become a Chris, a Catholic, a Chris, I, I became a Christian as a Catholic, then drifted into the non-denominational world for probably 10, 13 years. Yeah. And then I came roaring back. I'm sorry. I can't beside myself, but yeah. So you, you, when you go to the early church fathers, there it what, is. What, yeah. It's right there. The, starting with right the Dedicate, there. 70 AD. And then on the, so that's my, that's my intellectual side. The mystical mm-hmm. side is I was reading about Francis of Assisi. Now I'd gotten married in in uh, uh, Mason Prophet when I was seventeen, a childhood marriage. I became a Christian. She goes, "You're a nice guy. I love you, but this is not what I bargained for." So I'm out. I couldn't blame her. I mean, it wasn't what she bargained right. for. Right. Right. But that was over. So I was hurting. I was reading about Francis of Assisi, Benedict of Nursia, the imitation of Christ, the early desert uh, father. Yeah. Oh, yes. They were all Catholic. Yes. yes. This was before yeah. the split in 1054. Yeah, it was before. Yeah. 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 So Beautiful. everybody was Catholic. So there I'm getting it on that this is healing my heart. The imitation of Christ, right? I mean, yeah. get you humble. <laughs> and and I'm I'm being my heart is being healed. By that, well, it's Catholic. So I'm getting it on the intellectual side, and I'm getting it on the heart side. Uh, and, I, and, and I go, what do I do? And I hear this little still voice, and John Michael, I want you to become a Catholic. She's my uh-huh. first coach. I, I love her most dearly, and I want you to be a part of her. And I sought out a Franciscan priest at yes. Alberta Retreat Center in Indianapolis, Indiana, Father Martin Walter, and he became my spiritual father. He never once pushed me to become a Catholic or a Franciscan. First thing he did is he said, okay, you've been through this divorce, kid. Let's heal your heart. Well, you know, we got we to take a break, but yeah. it's good to always take a break right at that, 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 that poignant moment, too, because it brings our people back to hear more from John Michael Talbot. His new book, Late Have I Loved You, and there's an album to go with it. Uh, my, my mother's favorite uh, musician, also, I've loved John Michael Talbot since he was in Mason Prophet, and so it's a thrill to have him with us. Uh, we'll be, well, by the way, how can people find you? I've, I've neglected to say that. Oh, easy. JohnMichaelTalbot.com. Okay. All right. We'll be right back with more uh, with uh, John Michael Talbot. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. People love our EWTN TV show, Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak. Thanks to you, the show has won four different tally awards. And now, instead of waiting each week for the next episode to air, you can actually binge watch our show and even share it with your friends when you go to deepadventure.com and join the Mama Bears or the Man Cave. Along with all the other benefits, you get total access to all the seasons of our aired episodes, plus instant access to episodes that won't even air for several months. Long Ride Home with Bear Wastick, a great way to communicate the gospel in a gritty enough way that even tough men will stop and watch at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. Announcing Spirit Adventure TV with Bear and Cindy. So many people, especially you mama bears, tell us we want more of Bear and Cindy together. Well, we're happy to announce our website, spiritofadventuretv.com, as well as our YouTube channel, Bear Wozniak Spirit of Adventure, where you can watch Spirit of Adventure TV with Bear and Cindy. Join us where we live in the Hawaiian Islands or where we sail our boat, the Spirit of Adventure, in the Caribbean. Experience both adventure and serenity with us as we share our life together, as well as the joy and the wisdom of our faith. Go to spiritofadventuretv.com to find out more and subscribe on YouTube to Bear Wozniak Spirit of Adventure. And join us, Spirit of Adventure with Bear and Cindy. 
by 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? at schoolofmanliness.com or wherever books are sold. Mama Bears, get these books into the hands of your men. Here is a YouTube video short, which is based on an excerpt from my newest book, 12 Rules for Manliness, where have all the cowboys gone? Soft times make for soft men. Soft men make for hard times. Hard times make for hard men. Hard men make for soft times. I would say that we are at that stage where soft men are making for hard times. The sooner hard men step up, the better. I suggest that you pull your hat down and get ready for some bucking as this world gets more ornery than a bra with a thorn under its saddle. still listening i thought we warned you to change to an easy listening station well you asked for it here is more of the bear wasnick adventure aloha welcome to the bear wasnick adventure i want to invite you to uh, go to prime video our tv show that uh is currently airing on ewtn long ride home with bear wasnick our motorcycle based kind of immersive reality show, they call it, is uh, is airing on EW10. You can watch it. After, I don't know what nights it's showing. But you can watch, you can power watch all 33 episodes. It's a really sneaky way, by the way, if your brother-in-law's in the house and you kind of you want to share with him the good news. Just uh, go to Prime Video and uh, begin to watch Long Ride Home. We have so many uh, real gritty men that have been caught just that way. Uh, one of our guys in our man cave Trace Big Guns Chamberlain was walking in the living room and he heard heard the long ride home with Bear Wozniak and he turned around and uh, that was it. And now he's on the slippery slope. He'll be coming a Catholic in a, just a month or so. Uh, he's been going through a long ride home. So speaking of which, we have John Michael Talbot with us. John Michael, I want to tell you something. I know back in the day with the Jesus People movement, there's a lot of, I mean, not, with all the beautiful overflow, there was also a kind of a lot of conflict and stuff too. But there is one person that means a lot to me from back in those days. And I know uh, there's some controversy with Keith Green and Melody Green. Uh, yeah. But he, he had he had real problems with the Catholic Church. But later on, after Keith uh, died in the plane crash, Melody Green became a friend of mine. Actually, I became her accountant, CPA. Wow. Wow. Yeah, but she, yeah. but I, have to, I have to thank Melody Green because she's the one that, as I was coming back to the church, she put me in touch with Priests for Life. Uh, my friend Anthony did Stefano. Anthony did Stefano. I just won a world title in tandem surfing, and he put me together with his literary manager, who who put me together with, um, you know, uh, my my first publisher. And but it was Melody that was out here after she had suffered a stroke, and I was taking and, her out, just pushing yeah. her along on a surfboard, and I began to talk to her about surfing in the Lord, you know, the the metaphor, and uh, and she said, she started saying, "You got to write." It. Well, I told her. I'm, I, it troubles me about winning these world titles because I have pride. And she said, no, that's going to be the platform the Lord will use to open the door for your ministry. And then the next day she outlined my book for me. And so it was she that put me in touch with uh, beautiful Anthony De Stefano, Priest for Life, who helped move me into this ministry. So, But she goes all the way back to that place in her living room. Yep. So many of the great, great uh, people in the Jesus People music, all that great music that came out. But now... I just had to interject that because uh, yeah, I but, mean, Keith, yeah. Keith and I were like uh, Keith and I had several falling outs. So he's one of the ones I took out of the book because I just didn't yeah. want to say anything negative about Keith. And let's not. Well, yeah, let's yeah. not. Yeah, and, and, and Melody, Melody flew up here to our neck of the woods to to reconcile with me. And well, how long ago was that? Oh, it was right after Keith died. I see. He came up yeah. here with somebody and reconciled. I had given Keith a guitar as a peace offering. Yeah. Beautiful. And uh, yeah, and and she brought it back. It was my original guitar that I did wow. the Lord on and painter and all those things. I gave him the guitar. How beautiful. And uh she brought it back and she says, "Well, I can't play it." Mm. And uh, he she said he would never touch it. Mm. because it was catholic and she uh, says you know. I, she yeah, says i, I think i'll come back to you 
Well, he, she, she started build. I'm sorry. Go ahead, John Michael. She was just a real sweetheart. I haven't yeah. seen her in a long yeah. time. Since the stroke, maybe 15 years ago. Uh, yeah, she's a I, I, I haven't been able to reach her in the last 10 years, but she. Uh, well, if you do, if, she, if mm, you do, give her my love, please. Absolutely. You know, okay. and she, but she was building the bridge between the Protestant pro life and the Catholic pro life. She was kind of a bridge there. And but Keith, let, yeah, Keith, is in, Keith is in heaven mm -hmm. because God anointed him as a musical evangelist. Exactly. What he was not. Was, was a teacher. A prophet, was a prophet. Oh, I see. I was see. not a prophet. Keith right. was a musical evangelist. And don't you think it's important to kind of like God to do that? I'm sorry. I'm. I'm. Being with you really ignites me. I'm trying to. I'm sputtering along with about 160 miles an hour, gusting to 200 or so. But yeah, and to some to some degree, you know, my I love to read the early church fathers. I love to read Aquinas. But my dad, before he passed away, he said, "Remember, you're an evangelist." Yeah. There's certain there's certain callings that you have and yeah. it's really good to stay in your lane, you know. Right. So but but stay speaking of what okay, so I want to hear about this moment, this conversion and and how your path now you were you were on your way to Catholicism. Yeah, I I went to my spiritual father and I I I met with him every day for over six months. And then we tapered off to twice a week and then once a week and then a couple of times a month. And he was my spiritual father. He didn't call himself that. But as I look to the writings of the masters, I realized that that's indeed what he was. Mm. And, and uh, uh, he ended up, we were between bishops in Indianapolis. So he got permission to receive me into the church. And he received me on Ash Wednesday because I had had a vision about community in 1971. I was received in 1978. Mm. Mm -hmm. And he said, I said, well, should I become a Franciscan friar? And he said, no, God's given you a vision for community, and you will never be able to found that community if you become a friar. And the name of the community is Palestine. Brothers and sisters, we're the Brothers and Sisters of Charity at Little Portion Hermitage and Monastery. It's beautiful because there's so, singles and there's couples. There's, a, there's an integrated monastery of celibate monks, celibate sisters, singles, and families. I'm part of the family expression. And you know, for my background too, the Pecos Benedictine Monastery, which was kind of one of the thresholds of the charismatic renewal, yeah. it's similar. It's integrated like that. And uh, and we still have a monastery that they planted here in Oahu, yeah, which I'm right, part right, of. Right, right, right. And so and so 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 go ahead. And let, yeah. let me finish because because uh, I, you only got five minutes. You better do it fast. Yeah, he received <laughs> me on Ash Wednesday because he says, as a founder, you will live a life of penance. I'm not going to receive you on Easter Sunday. I'm going to receive you into the church on Ash Wednesday. Oh, how you, rich is that? Because you will live a life of penance. Oh, my and goodness. founding a community, people say, oh, I want to found a community. And I said, whatever you do, don't. Because you're going to live a life of penance. You'd better make sure, under spiritual direction, that it is really God calling you to do this. Because it's so much easier just to join one. Yes. Yes. You know? yes. So uh, it's a very difficult thing to found a community. So our community, I am on a charism. And here I'm going to end with this bear. Um, I am on a call right now. See, the West, meaning the Roman part of the Catholic Church, which is the Western expression of the Catholic Church, we have lost the contemplative beating heart of the Church, which was the monastic Church. Mm -hmm. And prior to the Protestant Reformation, since the third century, the contemplative beating heart of the church has always been found in the monastic expression of the church. True. We began losing it with the rise of humanism in the West, which began to see people and the new communities in the church in terms of what they do rather than in terms of who they are. Mm, and so we began defining communities in terms of what do you do rather than who are you? See, the Franciscans are, who are you? We live the gospel of Jesus Christ, period. See, we live the gospel. Not, oh, we teach. Oh, we missionaries. Right. We run right. schools. Oh, we do. You can do right. all those things, but that's not who you are. Right. We live the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
Same thing with Benedictines. You, you know, you, you live, you live the gospel. See, mm-hmm. so the older communities are who are you? So we begin to lose yes. that. Yes. So I'm on a campaign, as they would say in Ireland, a campaign. Uh, <laughs> Is that right? I'm, okay. on a, I'm on a campaign to revive the monastic, the monastic yes. charism, the contemplative yes. heart of the church in the west and that's what our community is about and so i invite everybody who hears this we need young healthy healthy in body in mind and in emotional makeup healthy young men to join us as monks we need healthy in body in mind in spirit and emotionally young women to join us in our sisterhood. We're starting with our celibates. We need vocations because monastic vocations in the church in the West are dwindling when we... and monasteries are going to begin closing their doors and shuttering their windows. Yeah, it's happening. People don't yeah. join. See, everybody wants to associate with monasteries, but nobody wants to join them. And if they don't join them, pretty soon there's going to be no monasteries to associate this... John Michael Talbot, we love you so much. Uh, not for what you do, thank you. But for who you are, that comes comes uh, just overwhelmingly through the through our conversation. Uh, if people want to find out more about that, we only have a few seconds more. But if people want to find out more about what you've just spoken about, can they reach you at johnmichaeltalbot.com? Is there another place they can find they you? They can if they want to join us. They can go to www.littleportion.org. Yeah, I love that. That's the name of your community. Yes. Um, Gosh, I don't know. I don't even know how to end this. It's so beautiful. You know, it's 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 that's the heartbeat. It's it's also it's the prayer. I mean, the 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 monks of the desert. They went out there to do battle. You know, we need that prayer, that intercessory prayer too, especially in this time. So I, I'm sure I, I expect God's gonna be raising up a lot of young men and women. We've been talking with John Michael Talbot. Uh, we always say aloha to people when we leave. The word ha in Hawaiian means breath, and aloha means to give breath. It's kind of the word for love. So John Michael Talbot, we love you and to everyone else until next week, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. Thanks for listening to the Bear Wildstick Adventure. Find more manly conversation at the Bear Wildstick Deep Adventure YouTube channel. Subscribe and ring the bell.